Elden Ring DLC story trailer has me convinced this DLC will connect all the unanswered Elden Ring dots and bring a closure to the entire Elden Ring saga. And the reason I say this... Mikula the Kind spoke of the beginning. She speaks of the time when Merica ascended to godhood and became the vessel of the Elden Ring. And how her actions not only defined the land of the shadow, but also the lands between. And in this video, we are going to decode this story trailer in a way never done before. We are going to try and uncover the entire lore of this DLC. And while this is speculative, obviously, it is an interesting theory and I would love to hear what you think in the comments section below. Now, let's begin. So, the trailer starts with a hand going inside which looks like a corpse and she is pulling out some golden strands, something that we have seen in the original game when Radagon tries to mend the Elden Ring. Clearly, this is the fabric that binds the Elden Ring and brings order. So, at the beginning of time, there was only one land, land which comprised both of the land of the shadow and the lands between as one. And you can see this distinction between the two lands represented as light and dark in this very image where the lands between is light, a golden light signifying order. And in the background, you can see chaos represented by dark clouds. And this concept of order and chaos living together as one ties in beautifully with the theory of Mesmer and Godwin, which we will discuss in a bit. Cause if this turns out to be true, it will be mind-bending stuff. So, in this land, like any other thing, a balance was maintained between order and chaos. And it was the Gloomite Queen who was tasked with the responsibility by a cosmic entity ruling the lands then for maintaining that fine balance. And this image is very symbolic, where we can see the Gloomite Queen looking lost where she seems to be losing that battle. Now, with all that knowledge, let's go back to the first image. Mekula the Kind spoke of the beginning. The seduction and the betrayal. Marika has been seduced by the Greater Will, another cosmic entity who wants to overthrow the current cosmic god. Marika, on the behest of the greater will, seduced by power, betrays the current cosmic entity, divide the original land and form a new land, a new order where the gloom-eyed queen will be replaced by Queen Marika and she will reign supreme. And here, it looks like she has defeated the cosmic ruler of the time, which is not a new concept for Miyazaki. We have seen him flirt with this idea in Bloodborne as well, where in a secret ending, we defeat a cosmic power. What if this entity possesses both chaos and order within him? And this is not new. We have a similar character in Marvel Comics, the Inbetweener, and in his own words, I am everything, for I am nothing. I am a concept of concepts, life and death, good and evil, reality and illusion, order and chaos. 
Merica, with the help of the cosmic being, the greater will, destroys the primordial crucible, who was the original cosmic lord ruling the lands, which in Elden Ring is defined as a mysterious aspect of Elden Ring's lore that plays a fundamental role in the world building and connects all living things. And what do all living things have in them? Order and chaos. So could this be Merica taking only the order from the primordial crucible represented by these golden strings and divide the present world and give birth to a new land which only represents order known as the lands between while leaving only chaos in the land of the shadow. And this can be seen visually as well when you see golden light on the other side of what looks like a trunk of a tree while being dark on this side on the side of the land of the shadow. And the other proof of this is the burning of the earth tree at the end of Elden Ring, which is just a manifestation of balance being restored to the world. Balance where, where there is light, there will be shadow, the lands going back to as it was intended, as one. And what I find most fascinating about all of this is, what if the earth tree was never the real tree? but just an illusion, an illusion to trick the people of the lands between to believe it is one and all, the source of all power. But her main objective was to hide from the people of the lands between the real tree, the great tree as it was called. And this great tree is now just a shadow of the earth tree and hence the land of the shadow. So this brings me to the story of Mesmer. And to know that, we need to know Godwin. And this theory helped me to answer the most important question. A question that has been troubling me since the very first trailer. And so kindly Mikula would abandon everything. His golden flesh. His blinding strength. Why would Mikula abandon everything? What would drive her to take such a step? Well, this is my take. We know from Elden Ring, Godwin was the firstborn son of Merica and Godfrey and was around in the early part of Merica's divine rule. I think Miyazaki has deceived us all. What I believe is, Merica's firstborn were twins and they were born in the shadow realm but not of Godfrey but the god that ruled the undivided world, a world we talked about earlier, a world which represents order and chaos and their union bore two children, one which represented order which was Godwin and the other Mesmer which represents chaos. And the reason I believe this to be true is, well, you see, all the children born of Merica and Godfrey are women, which represents a category of creatures with inhuman features, which is completely different from what Godwin looked like. He was referred to as Godwin the Golden. So two characters so apart. One represents order in the purest of forms, that is Godwin the Golden, and the other Mesmer, so chaotic, so dark, and these two can only be born of an entity that is the purest form of order and chaos. And it is this entity that Merica first seduces to bear him the two children and then betrays and kills him, removes order from the corpse and creates her new world the lands between and leaves behind the abomination Mesmer in chaos in the land of the shadow. Now this brings me back to the question, the question I told you which gave me nightmares. Why would Mikula abandon everything and travel to the shadow realm? 
You see, both Godwin and Mikela were extremely close to each other, and we know that from the golden epitaph sword, which has a prayer written by Mikela to Godwin: "O oh brother, Lord brother, please die a true death." Now let's move to another piece of evidence in Elden Ring, and for this we need to travel to Castle Sol, and it is here that we come across a ghost, and it is this ghost that provides us vital proof for the Mikela and Godwin theory, and when I fully understood it, I was blown away. Lord Mikela, forgive me. The sun has not been swallowed. Our prayers were lacking. Your comrade remains soulless. I will never set my eyes upon it now. Your divine halictri. Lord Mikela, forgive me. The sun has not been swallowed. The sun in this case refers to the golden light order, and the soldier is asking Mikela's forgiveness for not being able to stop the greater will. Is this a direct reference to the fact that Mikela wanted to restore balance of chaos and order, and in doing so, save his brother Godwin? I will never set my eyes upon it now. Your divine helictry, a worshipper of some kind that wanted to lay eyes upon the helictry, a common thing seen in other ghosts that talk about Mikela. And now the most important part our prayers were lacking your comrade remains soulless this is a clear indication from the soldier that they were praying for godwin's soul to be returned to his body but clearly they could not achieve what they set out for mikela was trying to revive godwin and that is the reason she goes in this journey to the land of the shadow to find godwin's soul We know from the main story the greater will does not want anyone to die and the soul is returned to the earth tree but my interpretation is the soul is moved to something that the earth tree is hiding and that's the great tree and that is where Mikela is traveling and so too must we in her footsteps the we are not to die Now let's discuss this war it's called the war unseen which also ties into what i said earlier america wants no part of this land or its war to be seen outside and hence referred to as the unseen war I think there are two different timelines here and yes this is speculative and might I say quite controversial but hear me out the first timeline is where the narrator refers to something that happened in the beginning and the second timeline is the timeline when many years later when both Godwin and Mesmer are young adults and this war the unseen war takes place just after Godwin's death. You see both Godwin and Mesmer are yin and yang, two opposite sides, order and chaos, and they maintain balance in this world. But after Godwin's death, this changed completely. The greater will imprisoned America, and it is at this stage America decides to take revenge on the greater will. and instructs mesmer her son to unleash what he knows best chaos chaos that will burn not only the land of the shadow but also the lands between and destroy everything that the greater will has created and the only way to stop chaos is via order and that's when mikela takes it upon himself to save his half brother Godwin to save the lands between 